altcoin market right now sit on the edge of either absolute dumpage or bustage unlike anything we've ever seen? But what if I told you the truth is bigger than anything you could ever imagine? Right now, Bitcoin sits on the verge of a make or break, absolute must bust scenario. And what happens here, exactly right here, is honestly going to change everything for a very long time. So if you love gainers, busties, pumpies, and dumpies, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Sign up with the link to Femex below if you're interested in buying Bitcoin or altcoins. And without any further ado, let's absolutely bust on in. Right now, Bitcoin isn't doing that bad. If we look also at the stock market, the SPX, up a little bit today after a massively dumpy day, massively red day yesterday. And this is going to be a very big picture, a very big key to also Bitcoin over the next week or so. We had the Fed meeting yesterday, which absolutely played a part in this. But uh, Bitcoin specifically is in absolutely one of the most critical levels that it's been in a very long time. Currently, it's actually trying and it did bounce so far today on the 50 day moving average. It's right now, honestly, actually, if we, if we get really incy wincy teensy into this chart, it's actually right above right above barely um this key moving average right here um so yeah actually it's bounced right now over the 21 day moving average after getting a bearish cross about a week ago and it's bounced now with the 21 day but now it's trying to hold above the 50 day as well which is we're seeing it struggle a little bit at this price level so this is going to be very big in, in the short term um, and before we continue with this i actually want to jump into a ton of different things most importantly um, it is absolutely important. We, for the first time ever, this is like a metric we're going to be watching daily, as I'm sure most people are. The spot ETF inflows are absolutely game changing. Okay. Um, and as I just said, if you're already sick of hearing about it, then you have absolutely no idea why it's so massive. This is going to be a catalyst in this bull run, unlike anything we've ever seen. And we're seeing the prelude to this. And this is honestly making me more bullish than I've ever been. And the fact that most people actually think that these Bitcoin spot ETFs are bearish, the fact that most people actually think that, you know, we got them approved a couple of weeks ago and, you know, not too much has happened. It was a dud and it was all big hype with no actual fundamental impact on Bitcoin. That makes me more bullish than ever. The fact that so many people actually think that, right? The crowd, as usual, I believe is completely wrong. Absolutely wrong. This is going to sneak up on those people uh, faster than a bellyache after having a couple chalupas at Taco Bell, right? It's going to happen very fast and it's going to be painful. And you're going to think afterwards, man, why didn't I see this coming? So the first thing I want to highlight is we've seen over 160,000 Bitcoin be gobbled up in these spot e ETFs. It's just the beginning. My personal opinion of what I think is going to happen is that euphoria for Bitcoin, which has not started at all yet, will begin around previous all-time highs, around $70,000 per Bitcoin. I think it will start peaking somewhere in the six-figure range, whether it's 100,000, 200,000, 250,000. I think around, you know, it's way too early to tell, and I absolutely don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you exactly when FOMO is going to um, peak in a bull market. But what I can tell you is that high six figures is exactly where I think FOMO will start to peak months after the FOMO begins, the, the euphoria begins, which is, as I just said, I think the, the euphoria will begin around 65 to 70,000 US dollars. And these inflows will start exploding massively. This is a chart showing us like how the inflows have changed since these ETFs have started trading. Do you see this right here? This is only, can only be seen as bullish, right? The inflows are growing and the thing that I, I, I want to kind of nail down is just that once euphoria actually kicks in, because look around, guy. Does, does anyone care about Bitcoin right now? Yes, you do. I do. Um, the people in our bubble care about crypto. But new people absolutely have not really started piling into Bitcoin again. If you remember what 2020 or 2021 or even 2017 and beginning of 2018 felt like, we're nowhere close to euphoria. My prediction is that this chart right here will absolutely look insane once euphoria actually kicks in. 
Because once the moon boys, once the retail, the people buying on Coinbase and Binance, once they start making money and, and start talking about the bull run like they have every other bull run, right back in 2020, back in 2017 or 2021, um, and then they tell their relatives and their relatives are either dismissive or whatever. Now those relatives, the older relatives, are probably, for the first time in history, going to look into saying, hey, you know what? My, my, you know, my kid's talking about how much Bitcoin's gone up. I'm going to put a little bit into, my, into a Bitcoin spot ETF through my 401k, through whatever, for the first time in history. And these numbers are going to go absolutely bananas. And on that same note, basically here... Uh, isn't it crazy how long Bitcoin bears can keep saying the same thing? You know, once the bottom falls out, once, once, uh, basically the same narrative about how Bitcoin is going to be dead. We look on the R Bitcoin Reddit, which if you're not familiar, there's literally a Reddit thread, which is dedicated to hating on Bitcoin. And my opinion on anything, if, if you devote a significant portion of your time to something you don't like, if you, if you devote a significant portion of time to hating on something, you're an absolute loser. There's absolutely no way around it. There is not a single person that I know or respect or anyone successful that devotes a giant amount of their time to spread negativity, right? Successful people do not do that. So basically, this is a, I mean, really by that simple rule, this, this subreddit is a, um, a subreddit full, filled with negative people who absolutely do not have good lives, right? They're not living positively. They're not spreading positivity or anything. It's a very simple thing, right? Usually, you know, in my day-to-day -day life, I just try to be absolutely and respectful to people in every encounter that I have. I try to be nice. I try to absolutely spread positivity. But I absolutely have not always been this way. And also, I know plenty of people even still now that are not like that. And um, it's a very negative way to live. And so honestly, the fact that there are people, I mean, I'm going off a little on a rant, but uh, basically these, these negative people in this, uh, these absolutely delusional people in this subreddit saying about Michael Saylor will be the last one to capitulate when the bottom falls out. These silly little narratives we've been hearing since Bitcoin was less than $10. Look at it now. It, it's just crazy how some people will never learn. This chart by Gel, Crypto Jelly on um, Twitter highlighting also the upcoming altcoin explosion. And uh, yeah, we are currently in a accumulation stage, kind of leaving that accumulation stage and heading into kind of a retest and then actually real altcoin gains, which we have not seen the beginning of just yet. The altcoins absolutely have so much ground to make up. And I think that um, we're going to be seeing that very soon. Um, Bitpain also on Twitter highlighting the ETFs massively scale Bitcoin as a savings technology by several orders of magnitude. With the ETFs, it is relatively trivial for over a billion people to DCA, say 10% of their income, it's impossible to do on chain in a sovereign manner where each person will be able to settle, uh, settle a single on-chain transaction approximately once every four years. Bitcoin, again, talking about Bitcoin IRAs and how big this is going to be for this space. Um, but also I do wanna highlight that Bitcoin price on the day of the halvings in the past, you can see these numbers here. Um, what do you think it'll be in just about two and a half months when we see the next halving. In May of 11 of 2020, it was $8,000. And within about a year, Bitcoin was at about 70,000 US dollars. Here in July of 2016, it was $670. And then about a year later, it had basically gotten all the way up to a little under 20,000 US dollars. So what, it, what can we expect the Bitcoin price to be in two and a half months during this halving? But more importantly, what can we expect the price to be a year after the halving? my opinion, much higher than it currently is. Um, James also from Bloomberg highlighting the trading spreads continuing to tighten. The markets are getting more and more efficient for these Bitcoin ETFs. And also, this is where things really start to get big. BlackRock accumulating 10,000 Bitcoin in just the last like two days, which is about half a billion dollars. You probably sold your Bitcoin to BlackRock, Josh, uh, Crypto World Josh says on Twitter. And also, uh, over 2 million, 200 million net Bitcoin inflows a day, meaning about almost 5,000 Bitcoin a day per day taken off of the market into cold storage at current prices. And there are less than 1,000 Bitcoin that are mined every day. Supply shock is real and supply shock is coming and we haven't seen any of it yet. Spot, uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs taking in uh, 700 million in net flows this week alone. Absolutely very big. People overestimated the short-term impact of the ETFs and they continue to dramatically underestimate the long-term impact. I absolutely, you know, I keep saying the same thing. A lot of people understand this, but a lot of, most people don't, is that if you're one of those people 
that think this ETF launch was a massive failure, whatever. Guys, look at the inflows. Imagine if we would have had these ETFs approved a couple weeks ago and we saw a chart where it just showed the inflows like going up a little bit and then kind of just falling off after the first couple days and into nothingness. That would be a very bearish narrative you could use. But do you, do you understand that nobody is saying anything bearish about the inflows because it's objectively not bearish? There easily could have been a situation where these ETFs launched and we saw something like that where it spiked on the first two days and then it just was a downtrend. But as I just pointed out, that's the opposite of what's happening. And this is, these are baby numbers. These numbers are going to explode, in my opinion. I think we have way more to go. Um, so objectively, again, bullish. Inflows are increasing massively. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF now holds over 66,000 66, Bitcoin, up over 2,000 from yesterday. 900 Bitcoin, as we just pointed out, are issued per day. And in April, this will drop to 450 per day. Again, the Bitcoin having two and a half months away. And in two and a half months, this supply issuance per day will drop from 900 to 450. The Bitcoin having has historically always acted as a massive catalyst to a bull run. You're simply not bullish enough. I'm going to scream this from the rooftops until Bitcoin reaches its fair value, which is way higher, in my opinion, than it currently is. Um, yesterday, BlackRock clients bought three times the amount of Bitcoin that was produced. Just BlackRock clients alone. There are also almost, you know, there are plenty of other ETFs. Also, nine other ETFs to consider. So this is, I mean, my goodness. Spot Bitcoin ETFs now hold over 3% of the current supply of Bitcoin in just a few weeks. Over 3% of the current supply of Bitcoin is in these Bitcoin spot ETFs. And as I keep saying, this number will look like a baby number once euphoria actually kicks into this market. Once your grandma, your grandpa, your cousin, your uncle start texting you, hey, should I buy Bitcoin? All of this. Imagine what that's going to do. Do you know how crazy BlackRock, Fidelity, all of these issuers are going to go with their marketing? We're already seeing them market. Google started allowing their ads a couple days ago. Um, they're going to market this like crazy. They're going to gobble up fees. It is going to be a monster business. These ETFs are already setting records in terms of, in terms of, in terms of volume, in terms of success, basically. So bullish. British Hoddle also pointing this out is the 1st of February. He tweeted this today. It's now 15 trading sessions since the Bitcoin ETF launch. The Bitcoin ETFs now have a combined holding of about 650,000 Bitcoin. They started with GBTC at 620. This means an increase of roughly about 30,000. The ETFs are sucking up a net about 2,000 Bitcoin per trading session. Assuming this pace continues as it is, they need to acquire about 100,000 Bitcoin by the halving or about half of a million Bitcoin by the end of 2024 in about 11 months from now. This is ginormous, ginormous. Um, Crypto Wealth on Twitter also pointing this out. Bitcoin is getting really interesting now. Price entering the red zone, which normally means between four to eight months left until the top. I think that the Bitcoin ETF inflows might change this or just make it more, much more bullish, much more explosive. Who knows? But um, I do think that your prime window is about to be closed. And, um, you know, as we get closer and closer here. And one thing I also want to highlight is that, uh, you know, what altcoin, uh, this is more of like a comment, uh, Q and a Q&A type thing. Leave a comment below, you know, what altcoin do you think is about to absolutely bust? But let's also be honest, in a bull market, a lot of altcoins are going to bust. In a true euphoric bull market phase, uh, or in the true euphoria phase of a bull market, basically anything you pick is going to go up. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious, you know, maybe I'll add it to my portfolio. I'm kind of just interested in, in seeing that. Um, currently today, we see that Bitcoin, uh, again, it's, it's up a little bit. This is a four hour chart up a little bit after these, after putting in a higher low from the lows back, um, on January 29th. Um, if we really zoom out though, on Bitcoin, this is on a seven day chart. You can see we have three massive levels of support and a really big one that we have already had a, a quick to that it bounced very quickly back up was about 38,000 us dollars per Bitcoin. And that's right here, also where the 21-week um, moving average is, right at this green line. Again, I think that's prime buying opportunity. I think absolutely worst case, unless we start to just see a complete breakdown of the structure that could last, uh, you know, two or so months into the halving, 
uh, this would be like, I think a worst case level. This, this level right here is absolutely mind blowing to me. The amount of support, actually let's pull out the VPVR and we can kind of just illustrate it. As we said, look at all this volume right in this area around 30,000. 30,000 was the entire big area to flip during the bear market to make it not bearish anymore. We spent from April, the very beginning of April until the end of October. So over six months trying to get above this level. It absolutely, in my opinion, now will be massive support. We have the 21 and 50 week moving averages or sorry, the 50 and 200 week moving averages above 30,000 right now around 31,500 in this range right here, just absolutely monumental support that, it, you know, if we would come down here, it's where most people would understand, Hey, we just had a massive pivot into a bearish correction. Now it's time to load up before the having, again, I'm not even saying we're going to get there. I'm just saying, if you really look for a worst case scenario, if I was really trying to force myself to be bearish on this market, if we got down to these levels, I don't know how you could still think that's not going to bounce. If we got down to those levels and I was mega bearish, I would think, well, this is the best I'm going to get. If I really want to short Bitcoin, I short it all the way down to 30 K trying to short it at 30 K to try to go down to say 20 or 10 K is just fantasy. In my opinion, again, unless some really, really fundamentally globally awful things happen, which you can never say they can't happen. It's just very, very unlikely. Um, and looking at Bitcoin's daily chart as well, uh, we see on the 2150, as we mentioned at the beginning here, um, holding this level is very big. If we can actually hold above this 50 day, which is right around 42,800 big, everyone knows, I believe if you've been watching, um, and just following content of most people, 44,000 is a big level to flip. You can see it's where a lot of resistance has been lined up over the past couple of months, going all the way back to the beginning of December. So for the past two months, and, um, yeah, if we look also at this chart, we see DXY isn't doing the best. Um, going down a little bit right here. You also see the stock market, which we highlighted here looking decent. It'll be interesting to see what close we get today. And then also tomorrow as we go into weekend trading for Bitcoin, but uh, yeah, overall, yeah, weekly chart for Bitcoin as well. looks pretty, looks pretty good. A lot of support all the way down at 30 K, but more so can we break 40 K or are we going to shift into a more short term, uh, short term dump here? That's the big question. Uh, if we really look at the momentum, if we go to something like the weekly chart and we look at the momentum, um, it does not look awful, uh, especially, you know, look at the daily chart here. Actually, let's switch this to the uh, seven day chart. And there is, and this was something we've been talking about. There is the potential that on a, um, on a short term, like for the next two or three weeks, we could enter a bigger correction. But I ultimately think at this level right here around 37, 38 would be a prime opportunity um, we've already come down to that level just on January 23rd, about a week ago, and it was quickly bought up. So will you get another opportunity to buy at that level? Potentially, but uh, really don't hold your breath. You, you've seen how bullish this market has become. And honestly, looking at this chart, this is all you really need. Go all the way back the entirety to the very beginning of 2023. You go all the way back to here. This thing has just been very resilient for about 14 months now. Okay. Um, every opportunity in a bull market, every dump is an opportunity to accumulate more, which is the opposite in a bear market. Every pump you want to short, right? I mean, pump short, uh, pump here, short pump short. This is a bear market for the past 14 months. And it took people a long time to be convinced. Now we're in a bullish trend, the very beginning stages of a bull market. So, uh, it's hard not to be incredibly bullish here in my opinion. And sign up with Femex Blow. It takes 30 seconds if you're interested in buying uh, Bitcoin, altcoins, or trading. And without any further ado, let's move.